Here we go, guys. Here's actually the history of Stephen's girlfriend, who was basically Stephen's best friend before Stephen and Connie were a couple. Okay, so this one's actually called The History of Connie Maharan. I'm so sorry about my pronunciation. Please forgive me, everyone. Okay, so eventually, let's go over the the history of Connie Masawan. All right. So eventually, what happened is during the pre-series, before before the episode of Bubble Buddies, Buddies, which is a season one, episode seven, where Connie makes her first appearance, she's actually seen attending a parade in Beach City. When Stephen saw Connie dropping her bracelet at the parade, he decides to re- keep it in the freezer so he can return it. Till next time he saw he's, he saw her, sees her. Okay, so this is actually a bracelet like right here. So this is actually Connie's glow bracelet. So eventually she dropped it during the parade, but it made its last appearance in the episode Gem Glow. So eventually what I was going to say is that this bracelet is actually a red-orange color that's actually a white slab, which is a small clear tube to hold it together. All right. So what does this one actually do? This is actually a glow bracelet. It's basically used like, basically used like episodes in Steven Universe. It didn't use in the Steven Universe future. That's actually all I know. But let's go back to uh, the history of Connie Masawan. Let's go back to the history of that. I'm so sorry if the video is going to be long because, you know, you know, how, how am I going to do I don't know. I'll just continue, okay? So Connie Masawan is actually an Indian-American teenager who's actually, who's actually the descent and only... And she's the only daughter of Doug and Prikana Masawa. Like, what I was really going to say about her is that she and Steven are both the only child. Because they don't have siblings. It's actually similar to Nehel from Nehel and the Magic Book. But since I'm not doing that episode, because I actually finished it, we're not doing that again. I'm just actually going to say it, you know? So actually, it's similar to uh, Nehel and Steven. So Nahel and Steven are both the only child, while while Lee's Frisha and Connie were actually the only child. But it's currently unknown who Frisha's parents are, because Frisha actually lives with her grandmother, as I mentioned in my last video. So eventually, Frisha and Connie does have dark darker skins. So eventually, but the difference is Connie is actually an Indian, while Frisha is actually like a Mesopotamian Muchi, if I'm not mistaken. My pronunciation could be wrong. I'm sorry about it. There may be some errors with the video. So apparently you can just ignore it, okay? Okay, so next one is season one. So after the parade, Stephen runs into Connie. She was reading a book near her house. Stephen apparently tries to impress her by doing tricks on the bike, but then he fails. Stephen panics and runs back to the house. As a backup plan, Steven actually grabs Connie's glowing bracelet from the freezer and she actually runs back to her, towards Connie. But after that, the cliff crumbles and falls towards Connie. Steven jumps to rescue her and this actually glows in, in cases of the bu- pink bubble, which deflects upon the rocks. Steven and Connie introduce themselves and ask Steven if he can really deactivate the bubble. Steven realizes he couldn't deactivate the he couldn't deactivate the bubble. He said the gems can help, but Stephen and Connie are unable to roll up the hill into the house. But instead, they tried multiple methods of popping the bubble. But when they got into the roller coaster in Funland, the roller coasters had hit them and then they launched Stephen and Connie into the ocean. The two of them try to roll back to the shore, but a giant roan appears and frightens Connie. But Connie starts to cry saying that she's not comfortable in here. So eventually, eventually she thinks that they may die, but Steven apparently showed the glow bracelet and they could still be friends. So eventually, when the two reconciled and they got back up into the air, the bubble had burst and apparently it used, to, it used the bracelet to lure the room into a nearby pyre. 
so eventually the gem sews up the garnet bubbles from the monster's gemstone. But eventually Steven got, gets embarrassed after Connie asks what's Frankie Flo. Now, there was actually another episode which included Connie. So eventually in Lion 2 the movie, it was actually known that Connie had shown the trailer for Dog Copter 3. It says that it's her favorite film, but Amateur sees Dog Copter and decides to shape shift. So eventually, when Steven and Connie apparently explore the Amorly of I, while Lion lays down to rest, Steven finds out that he can control the room. But after a while, he activates a floating robot. The Lion actually helps them escape, and the Armory takes them to Beach City Trailer. After being slightly burned by the robot, Steven had offered Connie a scan of soda to ease her pain. But then, they have important things to do. Steven says that Dog Copter 3 is very impressive to him and asks why Connie was actually wants to hang out with him because he messes everything up. But after dealing with the amazed ticket clerk, they finally get to see Dog Copter 3. But during Rose's room, a cloud version of Connie actually appears in appears in the episode Rose's room. So eventually they her cloud was like stuck on repeat to say it was incredible. But it's exactly the same way until Steven Universe runs away, you know. So this is actually like Cloud Connie. So it's actually like Lisa with an eye patch and the other one was actually a white wedding dress with the same eye patch. So in an indirect kiss, Connie and Steven were having a picnic. But when Steven apparently gives Connie the durian juice, it heals her eyes. Like the healing spit that Steven normally uses to heal Connie's eyes. Whenever they're actually in pain or they're not in pain. So eventually what I was going to say is that Connie takes out the lens out of glasses and can finally see in this episode. It, while in Mirror Gem, Connie tells Steven that he was over the phone that I can hang out because the school was closed for summer vacation. During Ocean Gem, Connie actually decides to go with Steven along with his father and the other crystal gems. They're... Their objective was to find Lapis and make it into water sapphire Lapis out of the ocean. But Lapis had to stay away and creates water clones to fight the gems. Steven's water clone apparently attacks Connie, but nearly drowning into the bubbles of water. Greg saves them but breaks his leg in the process. But Steven apparently puts his shield, destroying the water clone. Connie then goes up to the tower to talk to Lapis. But after Steven heals Lapis, he falls into the water. But Lion and Connie apparently saves him in the end. In Fusion Cuisine, Steven and Connie were actually watching under the knife. Connie's mother calls and asks to inform with Steven's mother, Rose Quartz. But then she panics and and it sounds like they died, you know? But that night, the parents are at the crab shack. Connie's father wonders why Steven was rolling on Android shoulders. But after a while, the two families were having dinner. It's to help her find in the restroom. But Alexandra keeps arguing with herself, which leads to unfrustrating. But then it actually ends up with Connie being allowed to be with Steven. And alone together, this is actually the appearance where Steve Bonnie apparently uh, comes. So when Steven and Connie fuse together with using uh, Steven's gem, they fuse together, but then after that, in the end, they were actually dancing, but they unfused back to Steven and Connie after a moment. So in what if forecast, Steven and Connie were actually hanging out in the beach house, but there was actually a snowstorm. Her parents decided not to allow to go out anymore because Connie became sick, but they apparently, but his, her father allowed her to stay to stay for the night. So eventually, Mr. Wilhelmin's car surveys out of control and crashes into Greg's van. But the third timeline was actually a watch. It Stephen convinces Connie to stay at the beach house for someone to pass. And there was actually a shooting star to the galaxy web. And Pearl was surprised by Stephen and loses focus. The star actually touches into the warp pad and it definitely does explode, you know? You know what I mean? Marble Madness. So eventually, Connie introduces Steven to the book series, Spirit of More Saga, and tells a story that they're interrupted by Plug, Renoise Paradox, sending to Earth. In open book, 
Both of them went into Rose's room, and Connie requests a ca costume shot to dress up when whatever character she wants, she wishes to. So eventually, this is actually an appearance right here, but he actually disliked it. But Connie and Steven existed in Temple White at Tanius, obviously had feelings for Lisa. The return. Steven apparently calls Connie, but definitely doesn't pick up the vocal message telling her about the gem warship. But in the episode, which is her last appearance of season one, Connie apparently calls Steven. She desperately starts asking what was going on, but she doesn't say anything. Okay, I know this video is going to take very, very long. I'm so sorry about this, but eventually I think we can just go through a short bit with it, okay? I'm sorry. All right. So the next one is actually full disclosure. It's actually believed that uh, Stephen and Connie apparently tried to call each other. Stephen doesn't answer. He wants to avoid Connie. But then apparently he was just trying to protect her. In love letters, apparently Garnet has a crush on Jamie. But Connie and Stephen apparently tried their best to help their friend. But it attempts to let Jamie down easily. In Sworn to the Sword, Connie begins to have sword lessons for the first time. So eventually, this actually does happen. She's still taking lessons from Pearl, but it was by her side. But then, Stephen and Connie fuse again into Stevani. Greg was actually shocked, but they unfuse again in the episode. Because you may you didn't know what I uh, even mean. Alright, he chilly did. In Stephen's dream, Pearl mentions that they're going to the school dance with Connie. But he answers the door twice, expecting her both times. A cry for help, Stephen calls Connie, experiencing paradox messages interfering as television. But in Nightmare Hospital, Stephen apparently does take Connie home, and both of them are in the hospital. But the mutant apparently had to attack them. In Steven's birthday, he apparently shrinks down to a baby. So eventually, Connie tries her best to be with Steven. But then Steven was actually back to normal. As I really mentioned about this, this was actually from my previous video. And this was actually the last episode in Season 2. So basically in Season 3, Kevin apparently inter interreacts with the both of them. But Kevin was actually a bully as well. So eventually what I was going to say is that the two of them did beat Kevin after they raced with each other because Steven and Connie apparently were too young to drive because they were teens at that time. However, if they, in, if they fuse into Steve Bonnie, then they can drive, you know. In Gem Hunt, which I actually saw the episode before, Steve and Connie and Pearl apparently went, went on a gem hunt, but they actually did find Jasper. But luckily for that, Connie and Steven knew what to do. So eventually, what I was going to say is that who's actually the only one that has, like, um, has a weapon to protect the others? I only know that Frisha's weapon, which is the fire stones that was given by the henchman, was actually strong enough to apparently attack a villain. Pacifica, on the other hand, doesn't really have a weapon, but she does have this kind of weapon, which is actually golf club. So I do believe the golf club and the fire stones weren't enough to attack a villain at a time. But what about Connie? Since Connie apparently took sword lessons, she was actually able to attack villains, especially with Steven, who actually has a, has a shield. Okay, okay. Let's just get into the part already. All right. In, in this episode, Crack That Whip, Steven and Connie apparently fuse again in order to, to save Amethyst from Jasper. So eventually what I was going to say is that this is actually another episode where they both fuse. But Steven apparently encounters him and, him and Connie to defeat Jasper. And Steven versus Amethyst. So eventually, in, in Buddy's book, Stephen and Connie apparently read about 
about Buddy Budwick's journal. So eventually what I was going to say is that they actually just read the story about him and how he actually met Rose Quartz and the Crystal Gems as well. In mindful education, Connie apparently walks up into the beach, but apparently they were excited to see to fight as Steve Vonnie, you know? But after that, Stephen was crying and Connie encourages him not to be guilty. But then they never gave up, you know? In Onion Gang, Stephen apparently calls Connie to hang out. But turns out that she's actually down and she was doing some back to school shopping, you know? So I'm not going to go through all the parts. Sorry about that. We're not going to go through all the parts. Uh, some of them, but in the end of the episode, I just believe that's, that Stephen really sacrificed himself in order to save his friends from Topaz. In both the episodes, uh, Are You My Dad and Are I Am My Mom. So eventually, I think this was the end of season uh, four. So I'm not going to judge like what happened because I think it would be too long but eventually, Stephen had apparently decided to stand up for Kevin because he doesn't want to be with him. And so apparently, that's because, the, that's because Kevin was actually a bully. He apparently did bully Stephen and Connie, but, but Stephen apparently uh, encouraged, encouraged himself that he likes Connie better than Kevin. All right. So eventually, uh... I'll just say that Stephen and Connie are actually the best of both worlds, you know. And apparently, they apparently got married. So eventually, what I was going to say is that Stephen and Connie does get along together, especially when saving the world. But this is, could it be actually the same as like Nahel of Risha or... Dipper and Pacifica. Well, basically, in my opinion, I'll just say it's like uh, similar to that. But both of them does have like a different power and a different perspective, you know? Now, what I was going to say is that I'm just going to say who's actually from the weakest to the strongest. Well, the weakest could have been um, Nahel, I think. Nahel Frisha. To say that they really just um, don't have that kind of like strong weapon. But even though their grip was actually kind of strong, it was just considered as like the weakest, I guess. Now, I think for the second weakest is Dipper and Pacifica. But because of that, Dipper and Pacifica uh, does have a little bit of a weapon, you know, like that. So I think they're like the second weakest. But on the other hand, for Steven Universe and Connie Masawa, what I was going to say about them is that they really have strong weapons. Connie has a sword, but Stephen, on the other hand, does have a shield in order to protect himself from getting hurt from any other villain. Alright, I think that's all for now. And I'm so sorry about this video because it will not premiere today, but it will actually premiere on the day that I decide. Okay? But anyways, this is Healing the Simpsons and Atomic Puppet Mother. Here, signing off. Bye-bye.